Hi guys and welcome to today's video from the Maths Guru. Yes, Maths Guru with double F, it's very important. And that is me, Darren. Yep, I have a name. Now, we're gonna deal with uh, quadrilaterals today and it's a lovely short lesson, I promise you. So this will be quick. If you're new and you haven't subscribed, how about doing me a favor? Show me some love by clicking that little subscribe button over there. It means little to you, but hopefully it means a lot to me. Well, it actually does, it means a huge amount to me. It means I'm not listening or, or uh, talking to myself in a room um, on my own. It's very weird. Um, so if you could, that's great. Now, quadrilaterals. Really short because quad means vroom, four. Now, you're going to say, why on earth did I just do the vroom sound? Well, because think about a quad bike. How many wheels does a quad bike have? And how many of us would love to own what's behind me now, a quad bike? I know I would, but unfortunately in my rather small house and very small garden, uh, I wouldn't go anywhere. So that would be rather pointless. But if one day you're out there and you think, do you know what? I'm going to buy that maths guru a quad bike. I wouldn't say no. I really would never say no. Um, and so, as is normal, I is highlighting above me was the red arrow, the uh, learning for today, and there's not a lot about it. And you're probably going to go, well, I know all of this stuff. There's two things possibly you don't know. But we will hopefully deal quite quickly with the idea of what is the difference between convex and non-convex. And I know some people go concave, and I'm like, oh, concave, like that. Caves. Anyway. Uh, and then the other are well, actually what the difference is between a parallelogram, a rectangle, a rhombus, a square, a trapezium, and a kite. Now, if we know what those differences are, actually, the world is our oyster. Which is weird, really, because I don't quite know why we'd want a world being an oyster. Right, let's not go too far. Now, much of the work we're going to do today is already been covered in previous lessons, and so I'm going to try and keep this nice and short and snappy. All right. But the problem is, we whenever I do a test, whenever I do uh, an assessment with, with kids and I say, oh, do me a favor, draw me a trapezium, uh, that's where the world stops, literally. Because you think the world was going in slow motion. Because the people just look at me and they go, mm, what's a trapezium? And I'm like, oh. <laughs> anyway, the point of it is, Let's just have a look at the differences of between. Uh, let's deal with this first one here, a parallelogram. All right. Now, the good news is if they ever ask you to spell parallelogram, well, just do parallel and just a gram. But what the definition of a parallelogram is, and I've written them down the side of each one is here. A parallelogram has two pairs of parallel sides. Now, parallel means that they are never going to meet. If I put my arms together parallel, that's parallel. They're parallel. They're parallel. They're parallel. They're never ever going to meet. So it's got two pairs of parallel sides. Okay, two pairs of sides of equal length. Okay, so that's also important. Not only are they parallel, two of the sides are equal lengths. And the opposite angles are exactly the same. So when we draw this, this is what we get. Now I have to say, that's possibly the worst parallelogram I've ever drawn in my life. And it's quite difficult because I've got, well, I'm drawing a thing with electricity, random. So what I'm gonna do is put one mark on here, and a double mark on here. So the question is, do I now, rubbing this out so I can do some ticks, do I now have two pairs of parallel sides? I do. Do I have two pairs of sides of equal length? I do. How do I know they're equal length? With those little marks beside them. So the single lines mean that these two sides are the same, and the double lines mean that those two sides are the same. I feel like I'm dancing again. This is just... Uh, anyway. And opposite angles are the same. Now, I just happen to know that if I call this angle here A, that this angle here is also going to be A, and if I call this angle here B, then that angle there is also going to be the same. And so, opposite angles, are they opposite each other? Hello, you're opposite, hello, yes, I'm opposite. And so they are same. So that's a parallelogram. Please try and remember what that is. Now, rectangles we've been dealing with forever. So let's just say, two pairs of parallel sides. Well, hold on a moment, that seems to be exactly the same as the last one. And two pairs of sides of equal length. Again, exactly the same as the last one. But the critical difference here is for a rectangle, all the angles have to be 90 degrees. And so drawing a rectangle, there's my rectangle. So much as I did before, there's a line and there's a line. So those two sides are the same length. There are two lines. They are the same length. And now by putting these little corner signs in, and you have to have to put them in. Now, if you had me for mass today, the chances are I was like, make sure you put that right angle in. And you have to put the right angle in. Now, only now can I state with absolute accuracy that that diagram is a rectangle. You'd be surprised the number of people who just draw that and go, it's a rectangle. And I'm like, no, it isn't. That's a quadrilateral. 
And they go, oh, and I'm going, well, you can whinge all you like, but it's a quadrilateral. So let's move on to a rhombus. Two pairs of parallel sides. Okay, again, seems to be the same, but now all sides are equal in length and opposite angles are the same. Oh, so that must be like that. And again, that is the worst rhombus I've ever drawn in my life. Now, while I can't make this beautifully accurate, what I can now do is put a little mark on there, a little mark on there, a little mark on there, and a little mark on there. And what does that tell me? Ladies and gentlemen, it tells me that those sides are the same. But hold on a moment. How do I show they're parallel? Aha! Well, actually, what I should do is put little arrows on. So I'm going to put a little arrow there, a little arrow there, an arrow there, and an arrow there. Now, whenever you see those arrows, that means that they are parallel to each other. Rectangles, I suppose, realistically speaking, we should put them on there as well. But I know it's more implied. What, what I mean by implied, well, we sort of know that. If these angles here are each 90 degrees, there is no way those lines are going to be able to bend in on each other anyway. So rhombus, two pairs of parallel sides, parallel, 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 and parallel, and opposite angles are the same. So once again, this angle here is A, so this angle here must be A, this angle here is B, this angle here must also be B. Oh, really? Am I going to insult your intelligence with a square? Well, it appears I actually am. One, two, three, four. So I suppose this is a rhombus, but with all of the sides just vertical. Now, a square has to have uh, parallel sides. I suppose that goes without saying. They're all the same length. So I'm going to put this little one mark on here. And all of the angles are 90 degrees. Now, this seems like a lot of hard work for every time I draw a square. And sadly, later on in maths, we become a little bit inconsistent. Why? Well, because we draw squares without them, blah, 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 blah. Now, again, I shouldn't have gone a little bit further over there. It's really hard to draw this. But trapezium. Oh, I love trapeziums. Now, trapeziums have great hand signals. Uh, but that's about area and, and other stuff. And, and again, we don't really want to dance. The thing about trapeziums is that's the main requirement. They have one pair of parallel sides. They don't have to be the same length. Um, they don't have to have certain angles associated with them. That is a beautiful trapezium. Now, later on, what we need to know is that the lengths of the sides of the trapezium, the parallel sides, actually help us find out the area. Too much to go into here, but trapeziums are awesome. I just want to go and draw another one. Because a lot of people go, well, that's not a trapezium. And I go, but actually it is. Look, these two sides here are parallel. And so it is a trapezium. And we can draw it the other way up. You know, we can rotate these things. And while that may not look particularly straight, that is a quadrilateral and it is a trapezium. Why? Because once again, here are my parallel sides. So we need to be able to switch these things around in our heads to be able to go, ah, the maths is trying to trick me, but it isn't. And the last one I want to deal with, and this is still a quadrilateral, is a kite. One, two, three, and four. Now, the kite says two side pairs of sides with equal length. So there's one pair of sides with equal length, and there is another pair of sides with equal length. Now, none of those are parallel to each other. They actually very definitely meet. And it says one pair of opposite angles which are equal in size. And as it turns out, it's these two corner angles here which are exactly the same in size. So if I write that one as x, then x is there as 12. And I have to say, kites are just awesome. Now, all of these are quadrilaterals. Why? Because when I went back to the beginning, quad means four and lateral means line. So it's looking for stuff or shapes with four lines. Does a parallelogram have four lines? Yes. A rectangle? Yes. A rhombus? Yes. A square? Yes. Trapezium? Yes. Kite? Yes. They are all quadrilaterals, but all very different from each other just because of their angles inside and parallel lines or no parallel lines. Now, the last part of this lesson before I let you loose on all the work that you need to do, and that's if you're watching me in my lesson, if you're out there in YouTube land, hi, you've got no work to do. This is just fun for you, hopefully, or a torture if your parents are making you watch this. But two important terms you must, 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 must know, and this is true for all shapes, are convex and non-convex. Now, convex shapes have to have interior angles less than 180 degrees. And I've written there less than than. No, it's not a lesson. That should be less than 180 degrees. And here is an example. So let's draw a quadrilateral with angles less than 180 degrees. Okay, so this is a great example. If I were to look and measure all of these angles here, 
I am absolutely confident they are less than 180 degrees. And I think another way to remember is that all the angles point out, right? They're all pointing out and away from the shape. So that's pointing out, there's an arrow, there's an arrow, and there's an arrow. So these are my arrow heads pointing out of my shape. So if I have something called a convex shape, then I'm assuming I'm gonna have something called a non-convex shape. Well, if a convex shape has all the angles pointing out, Guess what a non-convex shape has? Yes, one or more of the angles pointing in. Now, with a quadrilateral, um, and that's what we're dealing with here at the moment, then the only way for me to really do that is something like that, all right? So if I was to measure this angle in here, yeah, I would know that that angle would absolutely be greater than 180 degrees. Obviously, these angles here would become smaller as a result, but this angle here, because it's pointing into the shape, makes this uh, object a non-convex shape. So, ladies and gentlemen, that draws this little lesson to a close in just about 12 minutes. Wow, I'm impressed. What did we deal with? We looked at parallelograms, rectangles, rhombuses. We sketched them. We knew what all the important sides were. Now, if you're wanting to know uh, where you can get this stuff from, then I actually put it on a PDF on my website. Now, the website is just a companion site to allow you to download stuff. So, in the next few days, uh, this PDF will be up there ready for you to do. But probably the most important thing is learn the difference between convex and non-convex. Well, as is normal, homies, it's really good to see you. Thanks so much for taking the time. Now, have you subscribed? No. You didn't hit that little doohickey in the corner? No. Well, guess what? There's another doohickey for you to sign there, if you wouldn't mind. Again, subscribers for YouTube make all of the difference. Otherwise, there's a video coming up, another video of similar quality that you can have a watch. I'm done. I'll see you in the next video. Mass Guru, out.